What is up guys? It is Brian Phobos here for a very, very crazy story about Craig Grant and Yuliana. Here's Craig Grant, here's Yuliana's girlfriend, and that's what this video is going to be about. And we're going to get into that in a second, but let's go ahead and check coin market cap. This is absolutely insane. Bitcoin at $9,653. It is going parabolic. We just passed 300 billion in market cap. Crazy, crazy times. This is awesome. So let's get into our story and how this began. Again, if you don't know Craig Grant and Yuliana, you're seeing a lot of slipstream ads for BitConnect and everything on YouTube and they're on Steemit. And you know, they're obviously like promoting BitConnect extremely heavy on YouTube. So here's what happened basically the Trayvon James hack. And if you're just kind of catching up and there's been a huge controversy of whether the Trayvon James hack really happened or not. But I basically ended up putting up three videos. There was the one the night of that supposed hack. And I ended up taking a video of the show's over video that popped up that was by the supposed hacker. Then the, the next day, I actually posted Trayvon James's live stream that was on Instagram. And then I also ended up posting a video kind of in response to um, DJ, I think his name is. He had a video kind of talking about how he got hacked and how the rest of these guys got hacked. And it had to do with two factor authentication. And I went over kind of the security issues at the mobile carriers and people calling into the call center or people going into the stores and how somebody could fabricate their way into maybe getting into somebody's account. So anyway, I did that, but what happened was this guy, Andy right here actually posted a response and he says, Craig's old history. And you know, he had this, he had this link here and I'm always suspicious to click on links and stuff. So, but I ended up clicking on it and, um, and I was just, I literally almost fell out of my chair of the information that was on this web page. So, and here's the web page and the story goes on over multiple years and is super detailed and we're going to get into that in a second but let's go into kind of my personal experience with craig grant and yuliana so basically i joined steemit back in july of 2016 and craig had actually been on there i guess for a couple months at that point but you know here was an introduction post you know, different pictures of me jumping off cliffs and going on trips and, um, you know, that kind of stuff. And at the time, if you were around kind of with steam it, the payouts were insane for introduction post. Uh, I wish that would happen again. You know, the huge payout like that, that was really cool. Um, but Craig Grant was one of the first people who actually, you know, replied to me and he's saying, you look like a copy of me and that's amazing. And there was other other situations where, you know, maybe he mentioned me in videos or I mentioned him. Um, that was my first kind of interaction with him was on Steam. And I didn't know who he was. I never saw any of his YouTube videos before getting on Steam. It. So fast forward to today, uh, you know, I'm still posting heavily on Steam it and, you know, doing OK. Payouts kind of vary, that kind of thing. Craig has fallen out of favor with the Steam it community mainly because he's pitching BitConnect all the time. And there's a lot of people in the Steemit community that like don't really want BitConnect around. They don't really want it being promoted and stuff like that. They think it's bad for cryptocurrencies, the cryptocurrency space in general, and that you know a lot of people share the same sentiment that when it fails, when they exit scam, or when BitConnect gets shut down, whenever that happens, whether it's tomorrow or six months from now, that it could really be a cataclysmic event for cryptocurrencies, just like Mt. Gox failing back in the 2013, 2014 bubble. That was kind of part of the undoing of that bubble. And um, so anyway, people, he's not, he's, He's kind of fallen out of favor. You see all these are grayed out. He's not getting any payouts for these. And mainly because, you know, you have to show it because it doesn't show up. But um, if you look at the down votes, this person right here, Newsflash, is down voting them and they have more power. There's a couple others too, the monetary few. Um, so they're down voting everything he's putting up. 
and um, it's negating the payout. He's not getting any payouts. So that's kind of what's going on. His girlfriend, Yuliana, is on here, but she hasn't posted in about eight days. She was, you know, mainly just posting pictures, kind of using it like Instagram. And her main power, her main upvotes are coming from Craig Grant and Trayvon James. So, and those are on auto votes, you know, and all that. Um, you know, and then they also have other people on auto votes. Now, during the big dip, going back to a year ago, Steam it went into a death spiral. The Steam blockchain, the currency Steam, went into a death spiral. It went all the way, you know, its peak was around four bucks. It went clear down to seven cents. It was like 98% implosion. And um, Craig, during that whole time, kept blogging, kept powering up the entire time. And back in the day, you know, like especially when I first started with Steam it, Craig was in there a month or two before me, so he kind of knew more about the system. And when you're first learning, you know, you start watching some of the people who have maybe gained a following and that kind of stuff. And Craig used to always say, you know, he's rich and he's never known anybody as rich as him and, you know, all this kind of stuff. And I mean, I didn't know. I mean, I don't know how rich they are. Um, but Craig seemed like an okay guy. You know, it's just a lot of his stuff was kind of, in my mind, like, kind of quirky. I didn't feel like his cryptocurrency advice or his trading advice really was something that, you know, I was going to follow. Um, but, you know, I put them during the winter when a lot of people stopped posting on Steemit because it kind of seemingly wasn't worth it. Like I had him on an auto voter. I had Yuliana on an auto voter. I had Trayvon on, a, on an auto voter. And basically we're just kind of in sleeper mode, you know, trying to get a little bit of curation rewards. Um, you know, and just kind of supporting those people that were still going to be up there. But for all practical purposes, I've never had a beef with Trayvon or Craig Grant or Yuliana. The only thing that's kind of came into question is when Craig really started pitching BitConnect, we all saw what it was, that it was a Ponzi scheme, clearly. And we were kind of like, hey, man, you know, come on, man, you're, you're kind of like, you're getting a lot of these newbies into this and they don't really kind of realize what they're getting into. And that was the only real disagreement. Um, you know, and he, he, he responded back, you know, something like, well, the only reason I'm online is to make money, blah, 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 which I mean, that's fine. But, um, no real beef other than the fact that he probably knows I don't like BitConnect, And a lot of times on steam and I'll actually refer to it as shit connect. If you go down here, our shit connect poster boys, Craig Grant and Trayvon James playing us fake, you know, fake hacks, you know, question mark, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, I like that's the only real thing is that I don't like the way that they have promoted BitConnect. Now, if somebody joins BitConnect or Laser Online or BitPetit or Chain Group or any of those, I don't I don't really care. I mean, who cares? It's their money. You know, they can join it. And even if they're promoting it, like I don't promote any of this stuff. If you guys see, the only affiliate links that I have under any of my videos is actually the Coinbase link for the affiliate for the $10 of free Bitcoin. I'm not promoting anything else. Um, you know, I feel that if somebody is to promote it, this is just my general thinking is why not just promote it and just say, hey, you know, treat it like you're going to Vegas, you know, if you want to put a little bit of money into it. But, you know, I don't operate the site. I don't know. It might it might be gone tomorrow. I really can't tell you. I've been getting these payouts. So this has my, been my experience. If you want to use the link, you know, go ahead. Uh, but, you know, don't risk too much money. You know, that kind of thing. Just kind of warn people that, you know, it, it might not be that legit. So anyway, that's kind of the backstory of my interactions with them. Um, and over time, but so I, you know, again, I put up this video and Andy, this Andy guy, you know, he put this link here and I went to it and I was just absolutely blown away by this. So this guy, this Davin's Den, this guy has like a podcast and like a radio show. And basically part of his comedic act is he tries to like call scammers up and scam the scammers or trick the scammers. So that's part of the, one of the things he does. Well, he was on, evidently, either he was on a dating site or he was purposely getting on there and looking up accounts that he knew were fake 
to sort of, you know, turn the tables on the scammers. So, you know, he's saying a gone and like from Ghana or whatever scammer approached Davin using her picture. And, um, you know, basically it goes through this whole thing and, you know, he tried to contact Yuliana, you know, about the whole thing. And like, he wasn't getting any response, but he's basically, you know, telling her that, Hey, I saw the piece. There was a piece on 2020 and, um, you know, he saw that and it was on the internet and then he wanted to go ahead and try to scam these scammers who were using her pictures. And, um, there was, I guess, an original 2020 thing that they aired and then it ended up getting taken down. But then, um, in 2014, they kind of edited, they re-edited the, the footage of the whole thing. And, um, you can watch that here and it's like, it is crazy. Like this thing. So this guy's dad actually got scammed, thought he was talking to Yuliana and, um, actually ended up sending $50,000 via Western Union over to Africa, you know, that, that these scammers kept requesting. And he ended up, after he was kind of like broke and lonely, he ended up shooting himself. So it was crazy. Like he ended up dying, um, you know, this guy's dad and all that stuff. But if you watch the whole video, it's crazy. And they, they actually had Yuliana, you know, on here, um, you know, talking and saying like, oh, you know, she didn't know. And um, it's crazy that people are using her picture, you know, and all that. So is a part time Internet model. She created a website featuring sexy videos. And so anyway, like you can go into that. I don't you know the fact that she's, you know, she was modeling or doing, you know, bathing suit pictures or nude pictures like I, I don't care about that. That's you know, that's that's fine. I mean, obviously, that's her you know, up to her discretion and stuff like that. So anyway, the story continues and, um, you know, and he gives all these dates, like in, you know, in 2012 and all that kind of stuff. But this guy had a suspicion that Yuliana and Craig Grant were actually involved in this and that it wasn't just some isolated case of some like catfish scammers over in Africa using somebody else's pictures to scam people that they actually thought to make it more believable that Craig and Yuliana were actually taking more personalized photos, sending it over to the scammers who were then communicating with all these, you know, lonely guys who, you know, were having this kind of internet relationship and sending this money over to Africa. Um, so anyway, this goes back and forth and he kept trying to contact Yuliana. A lot of times like there would be no response or there'd be like kind of generic responses. And then, you know, his kind of suspicion kept growing that they were involved. And here's where it gets crazy, guys. Um, so he had screenshotted. He had been following Craig Grant and Yuliana for a long time. And he was screenshotting some of the stuff. So this was Craig Grant's. This was from Craig Grant's Facebook page, supposedly March 22nd of 2013. So anyway, click into this. And I don't know if you guys can see that, especially if you're on mobile. So over here at the left, it says, I moved to the USA from Jamaica in 2009 with no internet business and $30,000 in savings. We purchased a house for $30,000 cash, no mortgage. Started a bounce house business by purchasing two bounce houses for thirty, for $3,000, and he says internet money. From 2009 to 2010, I built up our online magic money thanks to Nigerian scammers in Yuliana. Well, that's kind of weird to say that. It says, with internet money, we purchased three more bounce houses. Now the bounce house business is booming and internet money flows and grows with the help of the bounce house business money. But anyway, going back from, you know, thanks to Nigerian scammers and Yuliana, that's really weird. Okay. So anyway, Davin was saying that his suspicions were confirmed because of this admission from Craig Grant. And then he actually contacted the FBI and then he never got a response. The FBI never followed up. So then June 27th of 2013, Craig Grant gives another public admission on his Facebook page with even more detail. So you click on this one and basically says, this is my best estimate of income in my life for the past month. Uh, okay. So then there's like $1,200 from MCA, which is Motor Club of America. I, 
I didn't really look into it in depth, but it, it seems like some kind of multi-level marketing company. Then it says like $1,500 from funny picture, website, blogs, promoting, blah, blah, blah. $2,000 bounce house rental business. But here's the main one we want to look at. $5,000 Nigerian scammers do all the work and get the ball of magic money rolling using the pictures I took of Yuliana over the past 10 years. They are in Africa, so of course, by the time the energy reaches Florida, it's falling from sky and we do no work, just get paid. About $50,000 gets sent to Africa before we see $5,000 and that's great which it's weird he mentions fifty thousand dollars and that's what the dude you know the dude where his dad sent fifty thousand dollars in money via western union so i don't know if he's just saying in that one situation and then craig and yuliana got paid five thousand dollars out of fifty thousand that was sent it just seems i mean to me it seems kind of like a smoking gun this is like pure admission that he's basically they're part of it they're taking pictures and then they've got this army of catfish scammers over in you know over in Nigeria or over in Africa who are then catfishing these guys and getting them to send money I mean that's crazy guys I'm just like blown away I'm just like what the hell so then you know Obviously, with this evidence and stuff, you know, he's, he's trying to kind of step up the thing. So, this whole situation gets crazier. So, Yuliana ends up suing Match.com for $1.5 billion, saying that basically her, her images kept showing up there and these, you know, catfish guys. Um, we're using her images and stuff like that and match.com wasn't doing enough to to get this stuff down and and all that kind of stuff so 1.5 billion and just I think because of the amount That she was suing for it kind of went viral in all these newspapers and um, You know it says death match beauty tells news how man's suicide led to 1.5 billion dollar lawsuit but the crazy thing is, it's almost like based on this stuff that, you know, Craig's admitting, it almost seems like Yuliana and Craig were actually involved in the whole scam, taking these pictures and then like kind of creating the whole thing and kind of, um, you know, getting these scammers going over there with those pictures. And then she turns around and tries to place blame on Match.com and sues them for $1.5 billion. Well, the lawyer who um, filed the class action lawsuit, and you only need one person to represent the class. So she was the only person named in the lawsuit as a plaintiff in this lawsuit. And then eventually, you know, it was almost like this guy contacted the law firm and all that with his evidence. And then, um, you know, there's all kinds of stuff. You can read down through this. It's crazy. It's, you know, it's absolutely crazy. Um, and there's just, there's a lot more, you know, kind of things from Facebook. Um, I don't know. So anyway, this was a thing and it's hard to see this, but it says Yuliana's lawyer said that somebody told the media that Craig Grant claims to, um, claims to get 10% of all the money sent to scammers in Africa. My response is, uh, don't, I can't read that. Um, don't waste your time trying to figure out how my organization is set up. Looking into Craig Grant too much will surely drive you insane. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. That's, that's pretty insane. But he's basically he's like saying, oh, they told him that. And, you know, don't try to figure out how my organization works, blah, blah, blah. Um, that's nuts. So anyway going forward so there was you know different communication back and forth and ultimately what ended up happening with the lawsuit is that Yuliana was taken off as the lead plaintiff and they actually ended up putting this melissa midwest that was a porn star um, was the new lead plaintiff then suddenly because i think that there was enough evidence out there that linked Yuliana and craig to the scammers that all you know they would end up not getting a payout and let's just be honest 
95% of these lawyers out there, they're just looking for somebody to sue or they're just looking at, you know, they're just getting, they're looking to get big payouts, um, you know, and so they're just looking for somebody to name on a wall, to, to place on the lawsuit, you know, that kind of stuff. So anyway, they got somebody else and then they dropped Yuliana off as a lead plaintiff. Um, so anyway, it goes further into a bunch of stuff, which you guys can read. It's kind of crazy, but then um, this Davin guy, he starts really kind of connecting the dots and basically Craig and Yuliana were friends on Facebook with a bunch of these Nigerian scammers, like all these African scammers. And he's got all these pictures of, you know, they're different, different friends and kind of like these people that sort of were known scammers, um, you know, and they're kind of posting all this money. There's like a baby covered in like all this money. Uh, but anyway, he's got a ton of, you know, ton of, ton of evidence here and this and that. Um, so anyway, and this goes in, you can look at the lawsuit that Yuliana actually filed against Match.com. You can look into that. I mean, I'm not going to really read into it and stuff um, at this point. But anyway, then, you know, again, they've got more evidence, more evidence, more evidence. Um, just tying all these people kind of together with these African scammers, which is insane. Um, and then it, it, it goes on, it gets pretty in depth. And then there's some kind of like, there's some kind of private videos that Yuliana sent that she's sucking on a dildo here. It's actually pretty hot. You guys can check that out in your personal time. And um, just other stuff here that's, that's crazy. You know, if you kind of keep kind of reading down through it. But ultimately, um, the story kind of ends like around 2014. And, you know, um, that's just kind of where it ends and he stopped updating it. Maybe he kind of stopped following the story or it just was like nothing was maybe happening with it that he um, he just felt like kind of his whole thing of calling these people out for this was kind of falling on deaf ears and all those kind of stuff. So anyway, fast forward to 2017 and you know, there, there are some of the big promoters of BitConnect and I'm not trying to say like, oh, don't get involved in BitConnect because these two are scammers. I just think it's, I just think the story is like pretty insane. And you know, you always get this bad feeling. I think a lot of the people that were in the crypto space prior to this surge there was always kind of this thing of like, why did, you know, why did Craig and guys like Trayvon James get so big on YouTube? Why are those kind of the, the face and the name sort of behind cryptocurrency? And why are the noobs kind of following, following those guys? Because they're not, they're not technical. They're not really um, saying much, anything of value. Obviously with Trayvon, he was giving away 0.1 Bitcoin. So that's an obvious reason to, you know, to try to follow him and try to get some of that Bitcoin when he was doing the giveaways. Um, but all in all, I don't know. It's just, I just think, I just think it's, it's absolutely crazy. And this website seems to be, you know, that, that seems to be pretty damaging evidence. I mean, what do you guys think about this whole thing? I was absolutely blown away and a lot in part because of kind of the whole, the whole connection maybe on, on steam it that, you know, um, Craig was actually a big kind of, he actually, he actually like in the early days back in 2016, he talked about Steemit a lot. He made a lot of videos. He was always trying to be positive about the platform. And then, you know, he kind of jumped on this whole BitConnect bandwagon, obviously got Biddy Rich from it. Whether the hacks are real or not, I'm not sure. But this whole side story of you know, that they're connected with these, um, you know, Nigerian scammers potentially. And I mean, it seems like he's admitting it. I mean, unless, and I don't, why would this, why would this Davin, why would he have any reason to kind of fake, you know, fake these Facebook um, screenshots? And you can look at those in more depth. Uh, but I almost think in my mind, 
that they did this and then maybe they didn't think the consequences. I mean, that's scam. That's scammy. I mean, you're, you're taking money from people. You're deceiving people. I mean, you're a straight up scammer if you're doing that kind of stuff or kind of in a way funding these guys over in Africa to do that kind of stuff with her pictures. And, and probably the way it happened, I can imagine that it would, you know, the guy would think, well, I don't know if you're real or something. And then, you know, they would ask her to verify with maybe some type of picture or maybe writing something on a piece of paper to kind of like verify that she's real. And, um, you know, and then it probably made it convincing, like, oh, wow, she is really real. And then it, it kind of fed into these guys' fantasy. And then the one dude ended up killing himself, which is, you know, an insane outcome, it seems like, clearly. And um, but I don't know. I don't know why Craig, you know, is, is sort of admitting to the stuff. He just seems, and it, it kind of goes along with the whole thing of really putting himself out there with the Bit, BitConnect stuff and having all that money in those exodus wallets and kind of keep showing it off it's almost like i don't know i don't know and to tell you the truth i don't know what should happen to these guys really when it boils down to it i just want to tell you guys about this crazy story uh, but i'm going to put the link i'm going to pin that as the first comment on the video that i upload here so you guys can check that out check the whole story check into the you know, check into the screenshots, see what you guys think about the whole situation. But yeah, that's pretty much it for today. I think I'm going to make another video talking about the Bitcoin run up and kind of what I see for the future and some kind of things to look out for. So um, anyway, have a great day and follow me on all social media. I'm at Brian Phobos on Steemit, on um you know, Twitter, on Instagram, on YouTube. I'm at Brian Phobos on everything. So please subscribe, follow me on everything, and you guys have a great night. See ya.